All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Exposure Runs the Podcast. I'm excited to have our next two guests. Um, it's always a pleasure when I get the players up here. It's even more of a pleasure as a father to have fathers of the guests. Uh, it's kind of a personal montage, if you will, for me. Um, I like to welcome 6'6", maybe a little bit taller than 6'6", but, you know, that's what he's listed at in most player guides. Uh, Bullerbrook High School, class of 2025 forward, JT Pettigrew. And his father who is a uh, legend in his own right. Uh, he played at Penn State, played basketball and football at Penn State University, which is, you know, my favorite college team. Um, they don't even usually let players today play Division One basketball or football. You have to choose. So, like, you are a legend in that right. Did it right around the time uh, that Antonio Gates did it as well, right? Yeah. Exactly. See, I, I pay attention. Yep. I know. So I'd like to welcome his father, you pronounce your name, Ticus. Yes. Ticus Pettigrew. Yeah, see, I've been practicing and I've been I've been making sure I, I want to, you know, get this right. So I'd like to welcome both you gentlemen to the show. Thank you for being up here. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Uh, we're just going to jump right into the questions and we go from there. Cool? All right. All right, cool. First question. What's your favorite subject in school and why? Subject in school? Right now, it's anatomy. It's a really hard subject, but I find I find it really interesting. Like, okay, learning about the body and stuff. Did y'all have y'all dissected like pigs or frogs or anything like that? We did like, we did like a rat, and we finna do like a cat next. That's kind of nasty, but it, like 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 real, like, like a real a, rat and a, a real cat. A real rat and a real cat. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> so all right, disgusting. You're right. It is all right. But let me ask you this: When y'all are dissecting these animals. Like, what is the assignment? Like, what are y'all doing? What are y'all supposed to be doing? What so, are y'all supposed to be learning? So we got to learn, like, like every every part in the body. So we got, like, like little pins that we have, and we got to show where each, like, they, there should be a paper with body parts. We got to show where each body part is in the body. So we got to really know, like, know what's, the, what's in the body. And now this is a part of the school's curriculum that you need to have towards your graduation. No. Oh, you chose to take this class. I chose to take. And it. see, I, I'm a I'm a school guy, so like I asked that on purpose because no one goes and says they. Well, most schools don't have anatomy as an elective or any type of general subject that you have to take. So you actually wanted to take anatomy. Yeah, and it was an honors credit. It was an honors class. Oh, so oh, that explains it. That was too late. Like first day of class, she's uh, raise your hand if you want if you're in here to go into the medical field. Everyone raised their hand. I'm like. Hold up, this, this this might not be for me. But <laughs> it, it, it was it was interesting. It's okay, a, it's an interesting class. I like it. Now, do you like do you like the class? Yeah, I like it. And well, how's the teacher? What's the teacher's name? Uh, Miss Jones, the teacher. I, she's like probably one of my favorite teachers. Okay, she, that was her. actually my next question. Who's your favorite teacher and why? Definitely, definitely her because she's like really helpful, and I like the way she she explains stuff. She makes it fun. Okay, like that type of like that type of class with the heart, like the hard curriculum and subjects. She makes it like very doable. It's interesting because when I have other players. Uh, slash students up here and I always ask them like what's their favorite subject is very is very interesting to me because each one of them have answered differently and now mm -hmm. this is the first anatomy is the first last week we had um, Chris Hill up here and statistics was his favorite and I hate math that's like my worst subject math is probably my second favorite I, yeah I like numbers oh, yeah see I not me I, I numbers I can count money but that's that's it I can't no, I'm good. Dad, what was your favorite subject in school? Mine was communication. Okay. And the reason why, because I love the gift of gab. As a true Southerner, you sit around the round table or in the backyard all day mm -hmm. and just, we just get it in and go back and forth. Sometimes we snap at each other, but <laughs> it's, it was just that orientation part of just getting to know who you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's why it pushed me into teaching. So okay. uh, I'm task force over at Bowling Brook, which means I get to teach any subject. And so far this year, I've taught African American studies, PE, health, Spanish, wow. English, uh, CARES, uh, multi needs. So it's truly being part of the culture for me that I, that I enjoy. Now, interesting that you said that because you are also the head football coach, correct? Yes. Most of the time, with all due respect to the coaches, uh, usually they're like on the support behavior staff. Mm -hmm. You actually in the classroom. Yes, I'm in the classroom and I, I coach basketball too. I stopped this year because I, my son decided to come over from Fenwick mm -hmm. and I didn't want to have any leverage put towards him. 
so he can show he can get down without saying oh dad because of dad yeah so i stepped away i took the freshman because it was part coaching but also recruiting because a lot of players that come to bowling brook exceptional athletes but the focus is basketball mm -hmm. just trying to get some of them to understand uh, the difference between uh 80 plus opportunities scholarships and 15. so mm -hmm. you don't want to just get rid of all your eggs when you can do both mm -hmm. so. uh, for you what is it like having dad um, in the building, like, do you see him a lot walking around in different classes? <laughs> no, but Bullum is a really big school, so I don't, I don't really see him throughout the day. But it's good having someone like in the building that you can like go to. And when you see me, he runs. I, I, so you know I was going to ask that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't, 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 try don't front, like, yeah, don't, don't front. He capping pop. I, I saw him on the second floor. He turned like he was in the track meet. I'm like, I just want to say hi. So let me ask you this: as, as somebody, who, as somebody who works in the school, also as somebody who I know is an involved parent, right? So it's a twofold thing. Do you find, or have you found that even when Trey was in school, and even with your younger son, and you have a daughter as well, correct? Yeah. So all your children in general. But do you find, have you found that with um, JT in school, that if he's having like, let, let's just say he acting silly in class or just whatever, do you find that teachers always seem to want to come and tell you? Stuff about him oh, all the time. Uh, yes, um, they, they're quicker to come tell. Quicker, me. okay. That's yeah, that's yeah. kind of how I yeah, should. They, yes. They, Does that annoy you? I'm not really one to goof off like that, so it doesn't happen often. But, but even when it does. Yeah. Um, no, it don't annoy me. Uh, so for me, I so for me, my wife and I, we are very involved, particularly when Xavier was in school, and even like my youngest son now. But I used to work as a dean as well, so. I used to could not stand when the schools, like when Zay was at uh, Hooth, when he was at Colin Powell, and even when he was at Marison in Oak Lawn, the, because the teachers knew that we are involved, and plus we work in school, so we know that school lingo. Like, stop, don't play with me yeah. with that school lingo. Yeah. They was always so quick, so when we go to the, to the schools to address a small or maybe even a major, which it wasn't anything major, but uh, a behavior issue, it was. It always felt like they was just so quick to come tell. But you got a classroom full of jackasses, and my son is laughing yeah. at the jack. So you are calling me because he's laughing, but you haven't called the parent of the kid who's causing the real. I it used to drive me crazy. Yeah. It used to drive me crazy. So you do you do see that, and then like it adds a little pressure towards your child, feeling like they got to walk on eggshells mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when, like you just explained, it's it, every. You, you don't want to say, "Well, look at everybody else," but it's reality mm -hmm. and the reality is perception so the reality is always perception yeah, yeah. always so wants perception. definitely understand where you're coming from but with with jt he's always been our academia he started fixing computers at nine years old oh wow so i just had a, a sense that basketball wasn't going to be his end all be all okay and from an educational standpoint, even being at Fenwick, he was carrying a 3.7, mm -hmm. 3.8. So a natural conversion to come to Bolingbrook, um, he, I knew he was going to challenge himself. I never said, hey, you're going to take all honors. It was his choice. Mm -hmm. So um, he, he, he just goes about his business. I, I, I gave him a nickname. He don't like it. Uh, but I called him Baby Duncan because he just reminded me so much of Tim Duncan. Now, I was... At Wake Forest, because I used to sneak in the gym, when he first got there as a seven-foot swimmer from the Virgin Islands, Muggsy Bogues took him under his wing and made him a basketball player. I not, was in the gym. Not a lot of people know that. No. Not a lot of people know that. He came to Wake Forest on a swimming scholarship, seven-footer from the Virgin Islands. Wow. And Rodney Rogers and Muggsy Bogues took and him And I remember the gym. Rodney Rogers was and they, there. And they worked with Randolph Childress. Like, yes. I remember all of them. Yes. And it's just like his demeanor. Even when, if you watch him play, you don't get emotions. He just get it done. That's how he was. And they call him the big fundamentals. Why don't you like that name? Mm -hmm. Baby Duncan. Baby Duncan. I mean, I don't know him. I wasn't from his time. Like so gotcha. he, he probably knows more than that. But I, I respect his game. I like his game. But it's just like he probably knows it, knows like gotcha. about him a lot better than I gotcha, do. Gotcha. Is, yeah. Okay. Who's your favorite? Not who's your favorite staff member that's not a teacher and why? At the school. Um, probably, uh, the trainer, they, like, not trainer, like, the, the like, my, bat, they have a basketball trainer there, his name Nick. Okay. And he, like, be at the school. I think he do a little bit of sub and bounce even throughout the day, but, like, we have a good relationship, like, he's helped my game a lot, and 
Yeah, we just have a really good relationship. Okay, okay. Um, who's your favorite teammate and why? Favorite teammate? Not that he doesn't like all of you guys, for the record. Yeah. <laughs> let's, get, let's get that out the way. <laughs> um... I think probably Davion, because me and him both being like the new guys, like it's both our first years on the team. Okay. We already had that connection, like, because this is, like, like we like came together. Um, now, it's, 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 it's interesting that you uh, mentioned Davion, and shout out to him and his people. Um, great young man. Um, I, I purposely didn't cater any of my questions with Davion. Like, he, he's a great young man obviously garners a lot of attention as, as one of the, if not arguably the top freshmen in the state. Um, so I didn't, I didn't want to make your interview, you know, asking questions about Davion, but I'm glad to hear that you guys, not that I didn't think otherwise, but I'm glad to hear that, you know, he's one of your favorite teammates. He, he, he has, I interviewed him once, like just after a game, mm -hmm. great personality. And I hate saying this about our black children, but very articulate, yeah. very, very, um, mature for his age and actually his game is real mature too like mm -hmm. for, for a young man so shout out to him uh, what's your favorite meal favorite meal um, probably a pasta dish what pasta dish I don't know, just like a pasta pasta, like pasta yeah, okay pasta. can you cook I can cook yeah what's your what's your best dish best dish I could make a really good baked ziti really it's like a five cheese baked ziti yeah okay okay can oh. you cook that all the kids were taught to cook because I can't. I no. I knew my sign. <laughs> well, I, 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 no, no, no. I, I'm going to call a spade a spade. All right, go ahead, go ahead. Just so you understand, let's get back to the origin of why I don't cook. Uh, okay. Being from the, the south, south. You didn't have to. Because my mom was like, hey, you need to be at the parks. We'll take care of the house. You go get yours. Mm. So when I came in the house, I had an older sister and a younger brother. Mom and my sister were in the kitchen. Me, me, my brother, he can. They took him in, but she was all. She wouldn't let me in, mm. so I couldn't cook. I knew something was wrong when I got to college, <laughs> and tried to scramble some eggs and set it on fire. Oh, so shit. that was the end of my cooking. Uh, yeah, that was the end of my cooking day. My I roommates, Lavar Arrington and all them, they was like, "You're done." I still don't think he knows how to make eggs. It's She's well, a, I don't have to because I, I, right. I, I have you all. Now. Right, right. Yes. Yeah. What about I, barbecue? Can you barbecue? No, I can't cook. At all? At no. all? No. Nothing. No, no. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. Nothing. So okay, they, so that's a first. Yeah, so okay. they, they are all the, my wife. You rely, you, the wife and the kids, you rely on them for, for yeah. substance. So I took <laughs> the wife to eat last night at Maggiano's, and it came, I got uh, some, like, uh, breaded shrimp, and I okay. took a picture of it, and I sent it to Trey. And told Trey, "Look what I made for mom." And he knew he knew better. He said, "You couldn't even bake the little green leaves <laughs> on the shrimp." He was like, "Get out of <laughs> that!" Is hilarious. He's like, "Get out!" So they all know. That's yeah, tough. I know. But I, I, you know, your strengths and weaknesses. And you, you just know, you, okay. Me. All right, I'm cool with that. <laughs> yeah. I'm cool with that. Yeah. What's your favorite meal of the day? Breakfast, lunch, or dinner? Dinner. I feel like like we come home from practice. Mm. It's that dinner is just there's nothing like it. Yeah, it's nothing like it. Now I can cook a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I can barbecue. I like I barbecue really good. Mm. Um, like for instance, last night for Valentine's Day, I actually made some lamb. I seared some lamb, put it in the oven, and it came out really good. And then today, I heated that thing up. It was like a thousand times better than yesterday. Now my my wife she she loves my cooking, but a lot of times I think she be capping to get me to cook so she don't have to cook. Yeah. She's like, "Oh baby, this is so good!" Like mm, I think you lying because I don't like it. Um, my sister just recently, my sister who lives in California, who she grows her own um, vegetables and all that, she just recently taught me how to make my own salad dressing. So I've been like doing that a lot yeah. instead of going to the store and buy it. I, I've been making my own, and it's come out pretty good. So I can cook a little bit. I mean, I can't. I, now pasta, rice. And pancakes are like my worst. I can't make. I can't make them at all. I don't know what it is. I just. I just can't do it. So, and I usually follow recipes to the letter. Like I got my phone up and I'm like, okay, pause, and I do what the, what the thing says. So that's my that's my cooking. Um, what about you, Dad? Breakfast, lunch, or dinner? What's your favorite meal? Um, it it had to be. What, I would say lunch. Lunch. Cause I, yeah, I get it brought to me. I'd be excited for lunch. Cause <laughs> half the time I'm rushing out the house and don't get breakfast. 
So, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I definitely would say lunch. Okay. All right. Game of one-on-one. Who's winning? You or Pop? 11-0. Right now, 11-0. Well, he does, like... Does he foul? No, like, I haven't played him in, like, seven years. He played me when I was in, like, third grade, and he won't give me a rematch. So, this is what I do. When, when I beat win. my kids, I put them on probation. <laughs> So you have to prove to me you you worthy of getting another shot. Getting another shot. But if I see your skill level better than mine, you ain't getting another you shot. You ain't getting that shot. <laughs> so so uh, he gonna be that stuck. That makes sense to me. He gonna be stuck with this one. Yeah, that, yeah. that makes sense to me. Yeah. That makes. I knew early on. I knew at about seventh or eighth grade, Zay was better than me. Mm-hmm. Like I'm like, yeah. See, I, I wasn't that good and bad. I was I was decent. Football was my sport. Mm-hmm. So I was okay in basketball, but around seventh, definitely eighth grade, me and Zay used to play over at the Matson Rec, and he, I'm like, yeah, I don't know. So then I used to start wearing like non basketball sneakers. <laughs> like, man, I got on Air Force Ones. I can't ball no goddamn go on Air Force Ones. And so, like, I stopped, yeah. I stopped playing Zay. So I'm, I'm with your dad on this. Once we get that win, that last one, right before you elevate, you stuck with that. You yeah. stuck with that L forever. And they try to set you up like we get in the gym. <laughs> Sometimes we'll be shooting that way to that. Let's get this one on one. I rebound for you. I, I, yeah, I get. I rebound. No, you're not getting this. Oh, we'll we'll have shoot offs. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that's as close as they gonna get. When is the last time you and Trey played one on one? Um. It was probably when he was back in town. Okay. Uh, last time back in town, we played like it was, it was one on one. It was like a game of twenty one. Who won? Between me, Trey, and Brady. I'm pretty sure he won, but it was close. Okay. I, I had like 19. Okay. And, yeah. and, and, and I've seen highlights. I haven't seen him in person yet, but I've seen highlights of Brady. He, he, I'm sure he's holding his own now. Yeah. Is he? Yeah. And how tall is he? Oh, what, six, six feet, six one? Like six foot, yeah. yeah. And he's going into high school next year? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. When y'all going to start getting y'all one-on-one matches in? When he gets warm out. Okay. Yeah, so this summer, it's, it's, it's going to be... Technically, they do, but... He be cheating. JT is the... <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. So, that, no, there's a, there's a calm and there's a storm. Okay. He's the calm because he's the big brother and don't want to hurt nobody. Okay. Brady is the rabbit wolverine that you just, he won't, will not stop. He's the last one? No. Your daughter's the last one? No. I have a five-year-old. So I have a 20-year-old, 17. Uh, oh, so you have four children. Five. Five. Four boys and a girl. Mm. See, I got, so I got Zay, who just turned 19, and I got a six-year-old yeah. who's crazy out of his mind. Yeah. Like, he's the rabbit Wolverine. So I, Brady, Brady is that third son that just, he's seen the blueprint with Trey. Mm. He's watching JT mm-hmm. evolve, and, but he wants it all. So he doesn't. He just doesn't settle. It's, it's, do you find him to be like being proactive in some of the things that he's doing? Because he saw it with Trey. Yeah, exactly. He's yes. watching it with JT, and so he's just applying certain things on his own. Yes. Yes. Now you said you have four boys and one girl. Like I, I thought my youngest son, his name is Zayden. We call him Ziggy. I thought he was going to be because I, I wanted a boy and a girl. And I thought Ziggy was going to be the girl. And when we went to find out and it was a boy, like I, 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 I acted a fool in that doctor's <laughs> office. And I'm scared to try again because if I have another boy, I think I might hang myself. Like I can't. <laughs> I'm done with boys. Like I, I'm good. I don't need no more. Yeah. I want a little girl. But I, for some reason, God won't give, them to, give, give her to me. Uh, off the court, when you're winding down, trying to chill, what does JT like to do? What I like to do, I like watching Netflix. Like I said, like, I like to cook. Spend time with my friends, my girlfriend. Okay. Spend time with family. Okay. Uh, out of all the players that I've interviewed, almost none of them, which does surprise me, none of them have mentioned like they like to play the game, the video game, like you know, either Madden or, or 2K or nothing like that. Like, Do you like to or like middle school year, freshman year? I did play the game, but it's just like so so like some of like in the high school, like you just get a lot less time. You just Slowly stop playing this. So I don't really play that like that anymore. Yeah, same. Well, uh, before I moved here, so 2012, I moved in 2012. I used to be in the game so heavy that me and my me and uh, Xavier's godfather, his name is Kenny, we would go to GameStop and camp out for Madden. 
That's yeah. how deep it was for us. And then all of a sudden, I just stopped being into it. Now, I'll play Call of Duty every now and then. I don't do the online. Yeah. Like, because them kids on, online, they nuts. Yeah. So, I don't do the online. I'll do the, the missions myself. But Call of Duty and um, the... Um, the Hitman game. I, I, I like them third-person so, shooter games. So we two in the same. But you do Madden, I'll do 2K, right? But I won't play against anybody. I'll do career mode. Yeah, yeah, me too. And they'll make fun of me because I'm never going in the park. Yeah, I don't do that neither. You go to the park, I mean, they wearing book bags, jumping out of helicopters. I'm like, I'm I, not I, doing I, Listen, do listen. You? First of all, I feel like Madden and 2K, from where they came from, the simplicity of the game to where it is now, it's it's too much going on. My attention span, I can't, I can't the 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 park and then in Madden you got the storyline and <laughs> yeah. I, it, it's too much. It make my head hurt. I can't do, I can't do that. I am looking forward to the new um, college game they about to release. I, I saw the trailer wait, today. I can't wait. Yeah, I, I used to be heavy. Wait. I used to be so heavy in it. I used to pay to get the the Xbox uh, card. You just send a. You can send away for the card yeah. to have all the names yes. to upload. That's how deep it used to be. Now you can kind of go online and do it. But I think now with the new NIL, the names are automatically going to be on there. Yes. That's what I'm hoping. So I'm looking forward to the new to the new game. Um, <clears throat> for you, Dad, having a family of athletes, um, you know the legacy of the Pettigrew. Like, what does that mean to you? Like, you got your son playing um, D1 ball. You got your your your, your second son on, well on his way um, to playing. You know, at the next level, obviously Division One. Um, you got Braden, you got your daughter, you got your youngster. Like, what does that mean to have that legacy? I just I love it because they're writing their own story. Now, I I even got them started their first sport. Every one of them was soccer. Uh, JT ventured out in the uh, baseball. Um, Try all of them tried football. It just wasn't them. Mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't want to vicariously live my life through them, so mm -hmm. I let them make their own decisions and just enjoying their past. Mm -hmm. um, because n I never knew my father, and I wish he was there for my journey. Don't have no ill feelings. I just you miss out. You miss out. You miss out. You miss out. Mm -hmm. um, but now just being able to sit back and watch them grow their own paths, and they're gonna be pitfalls. But they're gonna know when they sit back. They say they'll say I did this, mm -hmm. and that's fulfilling. That's interesting that you said that um, all of them play soccer. Um, and um, I, I want Ziggy to play baseball. I, I, we bought him uh, the little, some I think it's Fisher Price, like a little, um, the the baseball pitching machine. Yeah, got a little bat. So I took him out the first warm day, one day last week, and he was doing good. And then that thing came and hit him right on the knuckle. He threw the bat down. Was like, nah, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Now I played baseball in high school. Did all right. Got hit with a pitch, like like a pitch pitch. Yeah. Threw that bat down. I'm like, nah, I'm good. I'm not doing this no more. You hit me with another pitch, I might kill you with this bat. See? <laughs> I'm not. Don't hit me with no pitches, bro. <laughs> I feel like I'm talking to a man, but I ain't play. I went to a game. Got you. And I saw my my homie who I was supporting, and uh, he was playing a game, and I was just sitting there watching. He got hit. He dropped his bat and rushed the pitcher. He got whooped because it <laughs> third base, first base, they, back they got him. Yeah, so after he got whooped, he came to the side. And I, he was trying to ask me if I want to play. I was like, you legally just got jumped, and you ain't take your bat. You think, <laughs> look, you think he said I legally. I'm not playing this game if I can't take, take my, my bat. bat. Yeah, so he was like. He said you legally got like, jumped. He was like, don't ever play baseball. I was like, nah, yeah, I'm good with that. The sad part to my story is I got hit by a pitch in practice by my own damn team. <laughs> <laughs> and I felt like I could have whooped his ass, but, like, I was, that, that, that drink hurt. Yeah. It hurt. I'm like, nah, I couldn't even breathe after. Nah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm right. good. Um, that, that, that legacy. Um, you know, is there a lot of pressure to live up to? Uh, you know, just trying to forge your own path, or is it something like, you know, it is what it is, and I'm, I'm, I'm on that path. It, it, I feel like it is what it is. Like people, of course, gonna say things mm -hmm. like you have voices in your ear, but I feel like, like I'm good at tuning it out, and I'm just gonna do my own thing. Speaking of which, like you brought up the the, the, the <coughs> voices in the air, like you know, how do you how do you deal with that? I, you know, again, you know, y your brother on the path that he's on, um, great player. He was a great player over at Fenwick. Um, you know, dad, you know, played professionally a little bit, a high high level player at at the next level at Penn State. 
how, how do you how do you ignore those 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 things in your ear? Like people, of course, like my brother was a great player, but I just gotta realize, like I'm my own player. Like if I compare myself to them, it's only just gonna like it don't do nothing to me to come. Like if I'm better, if I'm worse than where they were, at, where when they were my age or whatever. Okay, um, Pop, as mentioned, you are the head coach over at Bolingbrook or the football team. Um, y'all coming off a pretty successful season over there. Like what's what's in store for the future for you guys over there? Um, <clears throat> we actually took our lump this year. Okay, uh, it 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 has to be a culture change, and. My first year as head coach, you had a, a lot of young men that was still kind of stuck in a, a head coach who did a phenomenal job before me, 20-year uh, tenure. Mm -hmm. He's also a 20-year uh, police officer in the community. Okay. So <clears throat> it was it, it was hard for change. Okay. And with me, just getting them to understand, regardless of the talent, <clears throat> you have to work. Right. Because when... Those who have talent and work, that's a powerful combination. It is, but our work will trump talent any day of the week. And, and that's what we needed to understand. Okay. And some people were just still stuck on uh, their talent was going to supersede it. But when it gets cold and you can't play basketball on grass like <laughs> we do the first couple of weeks, and you got to get in the trenches and run the ball and mm -hmm. smack somebody in the mouth, you'll find out. And that's kind of what we went through. Um, we didn't back down, but uh, we got they our man. Tested. We got, got our man. How, so he hearing that, what's the goal going into next season, number one? And my question is also, as the head coach, did you have to deal with a lot of uh, parental interference? I, no, because I checked that right at the door. Okay. Uh, that's the first thing I attacked is just letting them know you're in high school now. So – Start preparing yourself like you get ready for college because if your parents interfere, chances are you'll be home mm -hmm. or they will move on. Mm -hmm. So now in high school, you have to start being your own young man. And uh, I think the parents, they got it right away. They kind of stepped aside. Just, they just saw how hard we were working to transition to success. Mm -hmm. Like n now we're on a, a really good path. So we have we really didn't have leadership. And mm -hmm. that, that's hard when you have so many four stars and five stars. Mm -hmm. We got to get out of self and lead. Learn how to lead. Because now we have a really good group of freshmen, sophomores, and juniors that's coming through the pipe. And they're looking for that leadership, but they're not getting it. Mm -hmm. So now what are they going to do? Um, talking, to, talking about that leadership, um, J, um, two questions. One for Dad and one for you. Dad, talking about that leadership, <clears throat> as somebody who has played at a high level, at the next level, what do you look for in a leader, right? And JT, um, you're one of the leaders on that team. Talk about your leadership style. Um, how do you lead? I'll let you go first. Uh, how I try to lead is I just try to bring as much energy energy to the team as I can. Like, like obviously we we play really really good together. Like, that's the that's the only thing about the team. I, like I love about our team is mm -hmm. like. On a lot of teams, you'll see guys arguing. You'll see mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. Like we don't do that at all. So like that standpoint, we really have that down. But I just try to bring like bring as much energy as I can. Okay, pop. Mine is just to find the individuals who are willing to work when nobody's watching. Yeah, you got all type of cameras and mixtapes and all <laughs> that. They, everybody step up. But what happens when you in the in the the locker room? You got to make a tough deci mm -hmm. decision with a teammate about to make a bad decision are you just gonna stand there and be part of it or are you gonna stick your chest out and say it's not a good idea are you gonna do the extra work in the weight room when nobody's watching mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and most importantly the classroom mm -hmm. because you're identified as soon as you step in there they know who you they are they definitely know who you are yeah and then i told them i said the way academics is set up it's almost a not fail society y yes like it, so you got kids who Participation really, trophy is what yes, I call it. Mm -hmm. They're really struggling, um, but if they don't go to class, they don't cause a ruckus, if they them. pay attention, they're going to get by. They which don't is, pass them. That's what we're setting up for um, our our society. Like, those are our next leaders who are not getting pushed. They're, 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 they're not being pushed, and uh -huh. they're, they're setting them up for failure. And then, as you know, 
at the next level in college. To, you know, forget basketball, forget football. In college, you're going to have a professor that don't give a damn that you play football or basketball. You better learn how to do this work or you ain't going to play because I ain't going to pass you. So – and it is. Yeah. It is an interesting. It is an interesting. Uh, well, that's dichotomy. why. That's why I love Bolingbrook because we're allowed to put uh, coaches in the classrooms. So accountability. We've created a term uh, RAC where he's wearing across his chest responsibility, accountability, and culture. If you're not part of those three, you're not doing what we do. You mm-hmm. can't be a part of what we're doing. Tell that to the coaches too. We don't allow cursing. In the weight room, no derogatory language. We don't want it because in the, if you want to be a CEO or a businessman, when you stepping into the head of that meeting, you got to be able to articulate. Interesting, yeah. interesting. So. But it's it's in their music though. So how do you? Okay, so not, respectfully and and great, not allowing them to curse in the in the weight room. And, not, and and you know, as a dad, I'm not saying you know you want your kids, particularly if they're not around me, you know, out there, you know, f bombing it up and all that. But that expression is important like you know raising xavier we we provide xavier and my youngest son that that lane to be heard that lane to express themselves that lane to you know figure out how you want to say things so my question is like you know knowing that the music that they listen to that they amp themselves up to how how do you navigate that not allowing them to curse when they're working out but they're listening to the music that has obviously some of the language that you guys are trying to Oh, we do. Everything's clean. Okay. We, we we have a we have a tough, clean playlist. All the uh, all the artists is out. Okay. Now, all is the clean. You version. can listen just the clean versions. Yeah, that's what it's uh, Okay. So some of them get frustrated because of the <laughs> you know the pauses. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But at, but at some point they're just used to it because it's me trying to find out who's really gonna buy into it. Like, I, I, like, we know what we listen to. Right, 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 but, right. But how much are you really willing to buy into it? Okay. So. Um, JT, how tough is it for you to have dad balancing, if it is at all, have dad balancing coach versus dad? Is that a tough thing for you? Uh, I, I think he does an exceptional dad, uh, job. He doesn't really, like, he doesn't really, like, push that coach side on me. Like, he's just always, like, of course, like after a game, he'll yeah, tell yeah, me yeah. like, like what I need to work on. And I, like I need that, but he, he, he be he he's he'll be my dad. Like at the end of the day, like after a game or whatever. So, how how difficult how difficult if it is is it for you to to take off that dad hat versus that coaching hat? Not at all. There was just one instance that I don't even think I told you that it, it kind of set me. Uh, set me for life. Uh, we were coming back, uh, me and Trey were coming back from, uh, um, the, what's that tournament in uh, New Orleans? Uh, the Bigfoot. Okay. When Trey was in the eighth grade, we were coming back from the, and it was in Vegas, not New Orleans. Okay. So we went to the Bigfoot and we, we were playing Master P's No Limit Soldiers. Okay. And uh, he, had a, he had a rough game. He, had, he did, I, I'll never forget it. He had a rough game. So we were getting in the car and we were going back to the the hotel and I was just start giving him all kind of pointers on what he needed to do to make his game better. He and wasn't trying to hear that. He wasn't. And I was getting upset because he like I said Did I'm he upset. say it or you saw it? I could see it. Okay. And so we were on the highway. <laughs> we were on the highway and he said, pull over. Trey said this. Trey asked me to pull over on the highway. So I, I did because I could tell and he asked me, he said, do you love me or do you love me playing a sport? He asked me that question. He, he asked you that? Yeah. He asked me that question and it just, it broke me because it's like, I need to truly understand he wow. needs a dad right now instead of a coach. After he asked me that question, because I was, I wanted him to succeed in the game. Mm-hmm. So I didn't want him to fail. So I was trying to be the blueprint to say, this is what you need to do. Mm -hmm. But he still had to take his own path. So I was more in love with the the challenge of making sure he was prepared to go to war. And when he wasn't, uh, I think that's when I got on him. How much did that situation help you 
you know, filter or prepare or mold you for the rest of your children? I, I never approach him or any of my kids in that manner anymore to the point to where when you're ready to talk, they'll come to me. If, if there's any pointers, we have a cue, we do, and they'll, they'll take it or they don't. But for the most part, I, I have to let them navigate. And they want it more when they do when you, that. Right, yeah. right. Interesting right. that you said that. I had a, not, not like that, Zay didn't say, tell me to pull over, but I had a moment where, Zay, I was coaching him for a while, and I had to stop because I recognized that I was, I was having a difficult time taking off the dad hat versus the coach's hat. And I also recognized that he was having a hard time filtering through dad and being able to come to me versus me coaching him. Yeah. And it was a moment I was coaching him and, you know, a novice little league over in Matson, and I was subbing him out the game. And again, his body language. For, I, so I was more important. It was more important to me to have Xavier just be respectful, whether I was coaching him as his dad, because you ain't going to disrespect me regardless, yeah. or if you was coaching him. Like, I want the same whoever is standing in that spot. But he was coming off the court and he had a little attitude and he had did something wrong so I, he was my by far my best player and I just kind of wanted to like coach him and you know for, you know how you want to test your kids and, for, and he came off and was real like you know very arrogant and very like and I'm like ho 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 like dad instantly kick in don't even sit on my bench go over there in the stands and sit with your mother yeah. like he ain't played the rest of the game and I tell that story to a lot of people because that was the moment where I knew I, I can't coach him no more. Like, and this is just meaningless basketball, like rec league basketball. I'm not doing this no more. I, I, I'd rather just get the camera and be the dad in the stands and record. Yeah. And so that's what I, I, I started do, uh, doing. Um, JT, as you're becoming a young man, uh, what current life lessons has your dad taught you that you will always carry with you? It's a lot. That's, that's a hard question. Um, I think he's like, he's really taught me to be like the the respect aspect. Like I feel like I'm very respectful. I think that's big thanks to him. Mm -hmm. How he's raised me. That southern mannerism. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, you and your team, y'all off to a pretty, uh, pretty y'all y'all are coming off a pretty big win versus HF mm -hmm. on their senior night. You had 22 points, 11 rebounds, four blocks, damn near unstoppable. Uh, your last couple of games, you've had 18 and 7, 18 and 7, 16 and 13, 22 and 11, and 17 and 11. Talk about that game. Talk about how important that win was for you guys as you're starting to prepare for your state run. That, that, I think that was like one of our biggest games this season. Like especially at this time, like coming into the playoffs, that just gave us like a like a boost going into that. You know, like we already lost to them earlier this yeah, season, yeah. so it just, it just felt really good to win. Um, are you finding yourself? getting more and more comfortable on the court and can you pinpoint a game where your comfort and your confidence really kind of just kicked in? Yeah. <clears throat> I do feel like I'm getting a lot more comfortable on the court, like especially coming with a new school, a new coach. And I feel like Coach Bros is very like my Coach Bros is my basketball coach. He he's very approachable, so we have talk. So that's easy. And I feel like this last game, like with against HF, I shot the ball like really well. I was taking shots, so I felt like like that was a comfortable game for me. Can you pinpoint a game where you where you're from the beginning of the season up until just the other night when y'all uh, beat HF? Can you pinpoint a specific game where, to you in your mind, it's just like yeah, I'm unstoppable. Like that confidence just kind of like kicked in. I feel like that's a lot of games. Um, I got a thing. What game did I feel like that? I, I can kind of chime in because yeah. I saw it. Oh, go ahead. Way where he can't hear this coming out party, and it wasn't a an official. It was a summer league game when he played Marez and uh, Thornton. Mm -hmm. uh, Thornton yeah. Because I mean, it, they went head to head, but it's the first time. I really saw him put his arsenal on display mm. from his ball handling to his three-point shooting to his perimeter game. He, he, you knew who was the best player on that court that day when he was done. And then like they, they went at it a couple times this summer. But Morez brings the best out of you because that young man. He is phenomenal. He got a gas tank. Like he, he, he doesn't, he, his motor doesn't stop. So you got to tip your head off.
but iron sharpens iron. It, that's what it's supposed and, to do. And that's what I saw. And after those two games, and they lost, but the confidence was off the Richter scale because he just he showed that he belonged. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. Okay. Shout out to Marez and his dad and his family. Marez is a great young man. I'm mm -hmm. I'm definitely looking forward to uh, one day getting him up here um, on the podcast. Um, do you think the suburbs should have a city type playoff type thing? I never really thought about that. <clears throat> I would love to see that. Yeah. I would love to see that. Yeah. I would love whether they <clears throat> put them in sections mm -hmm. as far as the suburb growth, put them in sections like, you know, the north suburb, south suburb, like however you want to do it. But I think the suburbs should try to, I, and I don't know who needs to be in charge of that. Yeah. I mean, hell, maybe I'll just try to do something. But I think that the suburbs need to try to adapt some type of maybe the south suburbs and the north suburbs do their own thing. And then like the ultimate championship is the winner of that. And then the winner of the south suburbs. But it needs to be some type of playoff type of thing for the suburbs. It'll be a huge draw. It would be, yeah, a, huge it draw. be a huge draw. And then you got to think about some of the the suburbs like further south, yeah. and then some of the ones further north. Like, but I feel like it can be done, and I think it should be done. Yeah. Yeah, Prime example. Sure, sure. I didn't even know who Metamora was mm -hmm. until they came mm -hmm. down to the to the tournament mm -hmm. and found out they went to the state title. Yeah. But you don't even see them like. You did, they are small they, town. They, yeah, they're going. a small town. They keep yeah. them at. So uh, back in December, I believe it was, we went down to Carbondale. Was it yeah. December? Yeah. We went down to Carbondale and covered uh, an event called the uh, Illinois Get Down. Um, uh, Dan Cross, who used to play for Dan. Florida. Yeah. Um, he invited us yeah. down. We went down there and covered the event, uh, streamed the games. And we saw some teams that we didn't even, I never yeah. even heard of. Well, you know, I don't hear them. About a lot of teams because I'm not originally from here, but some of the teams down there they have some great players down there. I'm right. like, man, these players would probably kick some of these teams' asses up here, or vice versa. But it would be good to see yeah. those type of matchups as opposed to waiting till they get down to the state playoffs. So, I, I I think it would be something interesting interesting to see. Um, no matter what team y'all play on, what current player on any team would you want to play with? Whether you go play with them at their school or they come to Bolingbrook, who would you want to play with? Anyone. 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 Probably goes back to uh, AAU. Uh, EJ at Romeoville. Oh, okay. Mosley, he's just like, I like playing with him. He's a really good guard. And he, he's a very good um, like passer and stuff, mm -hmm. so it, it's really fun to play with him. Okay. Um, with same question, but this time from a player from maybe the previous two or three years, and you can throw your brother in there if you want. Yeah, my brother definitely. Definitely, definitely my brother. Like, how cool would that have been, Dad? To have the, like that's why I'm smiling because I we it may, was set up that way. Yeah, we may <laughs> get an opportunity to see it. Uh oh. Uh, okay, keep that close to the vest. Yes. But keep that close to the vest. Yeah. Keep that close to the vest. <laughs> now we all about the exclusives up here, but <laughs> I, I saw where you was going with that like i'm gonna give him a little tidbit i'm gonna spoon him a little bit all right keep that close to the vest how's he doing by the way uh, he's, he's doing really well good he's good. doing really well good i've always been a fan of his game um describe bowling uh describe your coach coach bros uh i know um aj is your coach up there that's my guy aj yeah, yeah that's my guy right there uh what's the school like overall like just describe it was, describe it, it was a very like big transition from fenwick because they're two like i feel like they have two entirely different schools, like not in a bad way, but right, right, right. One is bigger, one is kind of more smaller. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Different things. Bolingbrook. I like I like the culture there. I like the students, the teachers. I feel like everything very inclusive. Like I like I like my teammates. Like I said, Coach Brooks very approachable. Mm -hmm. Like one of my favorite coaches I've ever had. He he brings out the best of me. I feel like. And it's just, it's just, it's a lot different for me, but I like it a lot. Um, question for you, Dad. Um, and this is a very interesting question since you are a coach. And even drawing from some of your experiences um, when you played, and it, it's definitely way different. But, and I and I want to see if you answer this um, from a parental or from a coaching standpoint. Do you think that it's the coaches, let me, let me rewind a little bit. Who has more of the responsibility, the parent or the coach, for getting a player recruited? 
I'm going to say, honestly, I'm going to say the coach. And the reason I feel like the coach is because let's talk a scenario, right? You got a young man that come to a school. He's playing a, um, a position for the betterment of the team, mm -hmm. right? So if he's playing that position, but we all know he's going to be X, Y, Z at the next level, how am I as a parent going to sell that better than – the coach who needs to be the advocate for. Mm. If he's sacrificing for school, you as a coach need to be sacrificing for him. That is that is a deep perspective, and I love it. Last week we had um, we interviewed the high school cheer team coaches for HF, right? Mm -hmm. And I asked that same question to the head cheer coach and, and actually the assistant coach, and they both gave a really good perspective. And what they said was the Parent and the player, which I actually agree with what they said. <clears throat> their parent and the player should at least have withered down their list of schools that they even want to go to. Then the coach can kind of step in and help navigate that situation. Now, I never thought about it from that perspective, but you also just gave me something else to think about. You know, when I was going through, and I remember you and I did a, um, <clears throat> with Vontae, we did a, a, a Zoom with them, and we this was one of Vontae's questions. And I was always a firm believer in, that the coach um that the coach plays the vital if not pivotal role in the recruitment for a lot of reasons number one the coach college wise and the coach high school wise they make it known that the parents should take a step back and let them do their thing like that's a known thing from the high school perspective and from the college perspective it's like the parent is not involved hardly at all on the collegiate level and the high school coach wants the parent to be like let me do my thing well your thing should be also getting the child recruited and then you know coach bros bros's case and not saying that he's not doing his job but coaches like coach bros when you think about some of those high level coaches right they have those relationships with those college coaches and you would like to think that they're putting that word in oh you you need a guard Oh, I got, I got, you know, I got a guard over here. I mean, you know, historically speaking, you you've recruited from my school, so I'm not going to steer you wrong. Oh, you need a big. Oh, I got a, a stretch big. The game is going to a certain level, or oh, a, the, a lower tier school. You need a a smaller guard who can shoot and defend. Oh, I got. So I feel like the coaches, high school wise, they got those relationships, so they should be pandering those relationships with the college coaches. So the, how you put that? Um, I, I really like how you put that. Um, what has been your best moment so far in high school? On and off the court. On and off the court. Uh, on. Probably definitely that, like, like this year. Mm -hmm. Like, definitely the HF game. Like, the, the, the energy in the locker room after the bus, okay. ride, the bus ride home. <laughs> it was just everything about that game. It was just, it was fun. What about off? Off the court. I'm trying to think. Um, it's hard to think way back, but um, last night I had a good like, or it was last night. Yeah, last night I had a good Valentine's dinner. Like, okay, with your lady. It like, yeah, it was, it was really fun. All right, yeah. I'll take that. I'll take that. That's cool. Um, I mean, since you open up that door, I mean, you know, I got a little lady friend. I, that's. <laughs> That's what I. That's what I call. You know, when when Zay had his, I don't even know if him and the young lady are still dating, but yeah, when, when, yeah the little. I, I can't the, the girl like I just the, the title girlfriend. That, that's a lot. So I just call a little lady friend. Hmm. I mean, Dad. You know, what's those conversations like when you know when you're trying to give him those, those 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 pointers as a young man, but also dad. So there's a certain level of like, hey, 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 hey. Yeah. You can read between the lines of them. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. What's that like for you? I, I just say prioritize and make sure you you both respect each other's time. Because if you got to be in the classroom, if you want to focus on playing a sport to go to the next level, when you get home, it, it's going to be a, a certain allotted amount of time that y'all can spend with each other. So you don't want to be overbearing, but you still want to be... A young man, right? You know what I mean. Right, so, right. just trying to keep it all in perspective. Just like a healthy balance. Yeah. 
Um, what did y'all do? Like, where did y'all go for for dinner for Valentine's Day? Uh, she wanted to go to Benihana, so we, we went to Benihana. So Bachi was fun. Okay, yeah. all right. So you got a little run. What'd you get it for Valentine's Day? Uh, uh, Stanley, the the, the, the big little. Uh, oh, the cup, the cup. Oh, you found one. Yeah, uh -huh. I got one. Okay, okay. Um, how do I want to ask this question? Now, how do you feel about like the the gift giving? Do, do in your mind? Do you want him to keep it at a certain monetary amount? Um, like, do you have any thoughts on it at all? Like, what's your thoughts on it? Honestly, <laughs> I just I, they young, I, and I just feel like I, I just enjoy each other because don't let it become so materialistic mm -hmm. that the expectations are too high or too low. Right. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's all about the appreciation. You know what I mean? So, uh, yes. I just been blessed, like I said, with, with the wifey. Uh, she don't, she never asks for much. Like she just, uh, she's very appreciative. But like she, we get each other, we understand each other. So, what's the smallest thing can be the the biggest thing in her mind. And for for me, I, I love that. Right. So I, my wife is the same. Right. Yeah. And but I always find myself being caught up in wondering, you know, like like you said, the smallest things, right? Like so, like you know, for my wife, it's like uh, she 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 like materialistic things, like most women do. Mm. Like let's be crystal clear about that. But like a a, a, a holding of her hand or a hug will go a long way yeah. over something materialistic, right? Do you find that sometimes you be in your own brain thinking that she's seeing other things that other people were getting or giving and like you're like mm. yeah i do that a lot mine will tell me though <laughs> so, hey mine's will i probably just said hey she might see mine tells me in like sarcastic joke type ways yeah yeah, yeah. it's like man it sure would be nice to get such a side i'm like wait what <laughs> what the hell are you talking about i ain't got I that ain't, type uh, of money you look, better get your ass why you why even the other day was like who those red shoes look good on her it would be nice. Yeah, like it this, would be yeah. It would be it nice. Would be nice. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm not asking. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Better pick up on these idiosyncrasies, boy, because <laughs> your lady's gonna be right there real soon. Um Are you planning to play AAU this summer and spring? Yeah, I am. Who are you running with? Uh Weiner. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh Coach Brown. Shout out to Coach Brown. Yeah. Yeah. He um we're trying to get him up here on the on the podcast. We was gonna have him and um schedules didn't align, but great guy. Mm -hmm, yeah. I, I like him a lot. I like him Coach a lot. Brim? Yes. I, I'm gonna say since my interactions with him, he's special. I, I think You he, in for a treat too. He, he, yes. He's gonna get to a bigger plateau faster than most people expect. Just the type of person he is. I, I love his I love his his so 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 when Zay, we played with the Wolves for about two and a half, three years, right? When when the situation happened with the Wolves and we were leaving, Brim was my first call. Let me tell you why I love this man. Any coach would have took Zay. Like, yeah, we'll, we'll take him. We'll, we'll just kind of figure it out and da 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 da. And either Zay would have kind of suffered on the opportunity or whatever card. Brim said, man, I, I, I want him. But I'm not going to lie. This is when he, he had Kayton, he had Ahmad. And I think he had uh, what's the other kid? Sam, I think he had Sam on that team. Yeah, yeah. Um, he had one other guard, and it was, so it was like four guards on that team. He said, "Moo man, I, I'm not gonna lie. I I want to take him. I do, but I owe it to the guys that I already got. Like I I don't want to. I don't want Zay to suffer, and I don't want them to suffer. And I really appreciated that um, from him. So, like you're gonna love playing for Coach Brown. Mm -hmm. You're gonna love playing for him. I like him a lot. Um, What's your honest thoughts on the whole AAU circuit? Like, do y'all think y'all play a lot of basketball? And Dad, I want your opinion on that too. Yeah, we do play a lot of basketball, but <clears throat> I think it's like a different type of basketball than uh, like school ball. Okay. I think it's like a necessary one. Like, okay, it's different. Like, you, it's a different type of play style, and I think it's easier to show your like show yourself on on the circuit. So I feel like it's necessary. Okay, Dad. I've been and you went through it with Trey already, so like. Yeah, and, and I had my own AAU program in 05, and we don't put out some of the top players in the country. It's it's polluted to the point to where certain teams have to market a certain individual instead of representing a team. Mm. And that's the part that hurts because it's a lot of talented cats on one team, 
but the shoe deal making you feature that one guy. Is, and you're killing the other kids. Is that one of the reasons why you chose YNR? A hundred percent. I was going to say, because, because Brim does a great job showcasing everybody. Yeah. And and they get along. And mm -hmm. it's like, but you watching a team. You're not watching, you force feed a guy and you got alphas right next to him mm -hmm. that won't get that look. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the biggest thing to me with with, uh, with Brim, why I like J Bert, JT with him. He um and then also too you know he has that family dynamic his personal family dynamic you know with his children they got the children's books and yep. um the YouTube page I, I just I, I just love everything about uh, Brim like he's he's one of the select small few um that I've met since I've been living here that's in my circle yep. my inner circle like I I you know I feel like I could pick up the phone and call Brim. Anytime about anything, and he'll give me a straight up answer, um, whether I want to hear it or not. And you want those type of people around you, and those are the type of people. Like as you are beginning your manhood, your manhood journey, those are the type of people that you want around you. You want people around you who are going to hold you. Accountability has become like my favorite word ever. I, I just love the word. I, I don't want people around me who can't be held accountable. And I don't want people around me who can't hold me accountable. Like you're you're worthless to me in my life, in my space. So cool. Um, how has your recruiting experience been overall? What are some of your likes and dislikes about recruiting? Yeah, it, it's picked up this uh, past the season, like school season. And I, I, I like um, you know being able to talk to all these different coaches. You know, uh, like looking at different schools, going to schools. It's a it's a really cool experience. Uh, dislikes. I don't really have no really di dislikes about it. Okay, okay. Has, um, I don't know if you paid too much attention to Trey's experience, but has his experience with recruitment and even, you know, some of the stuff that he has gone through since he's been in college, have you been paying attention to that? Um, and have you kind of like internalized that and on, on how you are navigating your recruitment? Yeah, definitely. I like, like, like his, his path that he's taken mm -hmm. is definitely like, um, I, I learned from it. Okay. Like, like you yeah. want to make that right choice. Mm -hmm. Right. I got you. Um, is there any school that's a front runner in the recruitment for JT Pettigrew? No, there's not really any uh, school in the front runner. Right Thought now. I had one. Thought I had an exclusive. Like he had some. I, I, I kind of <laughs> feel like it's. I kind of <laughs> feel like it's. I'm going to let him live, though. Yeah, I'm going to let him yeah. live. All right. Yeah, uh, what are you looking for in a school? In a school? I want a school to be like. It needs to be the right fit for me. Like, I want to have a good relationship with the coach. It's not like about. Like uh, the name of the school, like I, I need a, it needs to be the right fit for me. Even if it's a, if it's a small school, big, like I just want it to be the right fit for me. Uh, what would be some of those determining factors to selecting a school? Um, coaching, like if I take a visit there, if I like the campus, the the energy, the team, obviously, like yeah. Will weather play a part in that? Like you want to go somewhere warm, get out of Chicago, get away from home? I want to say no, but I feel like it's going to be in the back of my mind. Like, ooh, this, this place warm. And, yeah. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Will the opportunity for immediate playing time factor into your decision? Yeah, that it, that that would be a factor. Like, it, it's not like a deciding factor. Like, I got you, but it will be a factor. Yeah, it's a, and that's fair. Yeah. Yeah, don't, don't, don't. Just a word of advice, don't shy away from that. Like yeah. when you're having those conversations, particularly if those coaches come and they lead with that, hold them to the you know what? I don't even need he, he know what he's doing. I don't he, even I don't even need to tell you all that. Dad know what he's doing. We we've gone through it enough to understand that um uh, in this damn time with the COVID and the extra years, you're dealing with young high school kids being punished because the new I love that is the, the the new thing is to be safe and run and get a 25 26 year old and not develop them and not actually be the coach you used to be but be comfortable with knowing that you got grown men that's going to win games against 19 20 year old the other thing to that is when you I, first of all i love that you said punish i love that word by the way and i know you're speaking from experience but we won't tap into that i love the fact again that you use the word punish because what's happening is particularly with the nil and all this other stuff that's going on and players having more control over their opportunity 
this old guard of coaching, they don't like that. And I feel like they don't really like it with our children particularly. But again, that's a conversation for another day. Um, I have been paying some attention to, like you said, the, the, 20, the 25, 27 guys getting nine years of eligibility. They should be working at the damn campus, but they still on scholarship. There, Go get an effing job. Or if you want to let them play, at least make them pay for their their education. They 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 are legally I saw something that a kid from Oregon and and some of his whatever was from injury. Okay, I I get it. He's on his ninth year of eligibility. Yeah, but it, I mean, I, I, it, That's I, insane. I, I've never seen that before. Like you you passed two classes. Like two cl- generation of kids. Like and, uh, and so the only the only way that I'm okay, you know what I'm like, how you explain that? The only way I'm okay with that is if in those years past five or six, you now you're coming out with a doctorate, yeah, yeah, some or a lawyer, like going right yeah, to a law yeah, firm, because yeah, because yeah. you yeah. first of all, let's be crystal clear: if you're playing nine years of collegiate ball past six years, you're not going professional. Yeah. No, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. So, a like, rap. your money is coming from... Yeah. And, and, and cool, because you know you're not going professional. So, like, you better be coming, like, your last year on that senior night, yeah. the next day, you yeah. should be going to work. <laughs> yeah, you, Seriously. You, you should be going to work. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, y'all, I, I, I'll catch y'all. I'll catch y'all later. I, I got to head to the, I gotta head to the I office. Gotta, I gotta, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly, right after senior night, you should be yeah. going to the office. That's the speech that should come with. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like he get up there, he be talking like, yeah, to me, you know, I got, you know, I got, I got to go to work tomorrow. I got to be to work by six a.m. Punch in. I got to punch yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, what are we doing here, man? Right? Like, anyway, scout yourself. What type of player are you? What type of player will a college be getting in JT Pettigrew? Uh, someone who plays both ends of the floor. Like, obviously, like you said my stats. I get a lot of rebounds. Mm-hmm. I get a lot of blocks. Like mm-hmm. I, I play hard on both ends, and then you're also gonna get some of the energy. I feel like so, like coming in as a freshman, I think I can make an impact. Like even not even on the court. Okay, dad, take your take your dad hat off. Put your coaching hat on. College coach comes to you, and 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 I'm going to assume, and this this is a I'm gonna go on record and saying this is a great assumption. I mean, being as though that you played at that next level on a very high level, like you have some, you know, coaches in your roller deck. Coach call you up, say, scout your son. Uh, JT is the type uh, that is the, that new position that we're starting to come to play, which is the stretch. Mm-hmm. And the stretch has to be able to not only be effective on the defensive end of rebounding and altering shots, mm-hmm. but being able to play on the perimeter as well as inside. Um, where we want to get to is being able to guard at that position. So it's 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 different at the collegiate level because Coach Brim took us to DePaul and we watched practice. And you saw uh, twos and threes that was six seven, six nine, six eight. His yeah, height. Yeah, very fluent with the ball that can slash, got quick twitch. You gotta stay in front of that. You gotta like guard you, that. It's a little different. Right now he's used to guarding the bigs. Yeah. He gotta be able to guard the the guards. Yes. And, okay. And what Bros does, which I love in practice, is that he makes them all play fast, but they all guard each other. So you'll see moments where he's looking at uh, DJ. He he he's guarding Davion on the wing, and it's it's only evolving his game okay. because he's not limiting him with playing three quarter on the post or mm-hmm. playing help side to block a shot. Most of his blocks actually come from he go, he dives down from the three point line. You don't even see him, like because he's guarding a guard. Then he comes down because he understands two passes away. You on the help line, so it's uh, it's it was different to go to DePaul and see that kind of size play that fast and know that wasn't a center. Mm. Oh, that was the the one and the two <laughs> and the three. I said that's what you're trying to evolve right, to get to. Right. And being that he's a junior. And the off-season work that he's getting with with Nick and Brim, that's what we want to work towards. Okay, um, I know you got one more year of high school. Um, eventually, again, playing at the next level is uh, paramount for yourself. But when you get to that point, uh, how will you adjust to being back at the bottom of the totem pole as a freshman in college? How how will you make that adjustment? Uh, I'm just gonna. I, I I'm gonna have to realize like I'm gonna have to like work for it. Like I'm I'm at the bottom and I gotta. 
and I got to show that I shouldn't be at the bottom and I, and I can be more than someone at the bottom. Okay. All right. I like that answer. Um, what are your thoughts on high school rankings? I think right now, prep hoops, uh, you know, and, 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 and <sighs> they have you at 14, number one at your position. Uh, what's your thoughts on just high school rankings as, as a whole, whether it's prep hoops or some of the other national uh, ranking uh, systems? I don't, I don't think, like, in high school, like, I mean, rankings, like, you can look at them, but I don't think they, they should play a part. And, like, you should you should really, like, look at them and, like, base anything off of them. Because, like, at the next level, like, at the, like even in college, you, you, don't really, you don't really care, like, what they were ranked in high school or, like. Do you think college coaches, blah, blah, blah. do you think college coaches pay close attention to these rankings and affects their recruiting? I mean, like they'll, they'll they probably look at the website, see like the names, and mm-hmm. they'll probably see them. But I think when they go to games, they like they're good enough. Like they've been doing it for so many years, they know how to like they know who they want, and they can see like a talent and a player outside of the rankings. Dad, how much do you think the the rankings uh, the college coaches pay attention to? Uh, they have very limited time now, so you have to have a, a point of uh, like a target. So what are you going to look at? You can't just go sit in the gym and then say you're going to watch 82 games. Mm-hmm. You can't do it. So now you have to find where's the source. Most of the rankings and like the ESPN, there's the target. But then you have to ask yourself as a coach, am I really going to get that kid? Mm-hmm. So now you, but you got a base of what you're going to watch. Then you find the diamonds in the rough gotcha. because you go to that game, you see the, what everybody else looking at. But most people go to those games to knock him off. So now I need to target. Oh, that's him. got you. Got you. Know you. What I'm got like, you. I got know you. what they want. Got you. I'm finna get that one right you, there you, because if he knock him off, that's a top dog. Okay. So I we use the rankings in the house as targets and the bar. They'll set the bar by telling us who we need to go get. Okay. So I tell all my kids, I just find them. Because at some point, you're going to be in front of them. Go get them. Go get them. Yeah. Go get them. Yeah. Sick them. them. Yeah. That's yeah. what we do. I like it. Um, you had a great showing at the Shot Town Showcase. I really appreciate you coming out. Yeah, I hope you really you. enjoyed yourself out there. Um, do you think it helped with your recruiting at all? Yeah, just to start out, like it was like a great experience. Like it was a one-time thing playing in that in a um, in the gym in the gym. It was, oof. But <laughs> yeah, I think it definitely did help my exposure. All the media there, like especially like, and and like like the pictures I got. It was mm-hmm. it was it was a really cool. Experience. I'm still I'm still sifting through quite a few, actually not more than quite a few, like a substantial amount of content. Like yeah. I mm-hmm. I haven't even some of it I still haven't received, but. I got so much. It's kind of like uh, I don't have time to chase down nobody because I'm still going through stuff. And matter of fact, stuff will still pop up on my timeline or in my search. When I'm going to search for something, stuff pops up from other. I just I just did this last night. I restoried some stuff that like, damn, I missed this. I didn't know such and such posted this. It was a great event. And we get ready to do the uh, unsigned senior event. So, um, again, I you know I, I appreciate you coming. And I'm glad yeah, that you enjoyed you yourself down there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the number one thing I love what you did when I was sitting in there is you stopped the whole. Oh, everybody keep talking. Everybody but yeah. but it was, the, it was but he it, he changed the game yeah, because sure. now kids are not gonna look at showcases and exposures as just I'm just going to do some and one moves mm-hmm. and clear the court and go one on one because college coaches aren't looking for they're that. not looking for that. So mm-hmm. once you shut it down, it got real, and then they start competing. Mm-hmm. But not too many people are willing. To, to do that, to put a halt to no, it. See now, I, so so yeah, I so I, I wear on my sleeve like you know. Yeah. I, I know you've like we've had conversations uh, before in passing. We did the Bonte thing, and I know you did your homework. I, I know you did your homework on like who I am as a person. I wear on my sleeve that I'm not from here, and so I feel like that uh, allows me a certain level of like I ain't gotta follow no rules of these yeah. people here. So yeah. stopping that showcase, somebody, you know, with all due respect to anybody else that would, that has or would throw, they got those relationships with those kids, which I, I, I have a, it, 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 I have like this, I can't describe it of how I feel like I have the relationships with the, with the young men mm-hmm. and with the parents. Like that's important to me. Right. So I feel like that allowed me that opportunity to be like, 
Don't nobody want to see this shit? <laughs> and no. I got tired of watching the po- the point guards. Like I said, they wasn't point guarding enough for me. Yeah. And so yeah, that's why I stopped. I, I got so many messages. I'm glad somebody caught it on tape, but I had got so many messages, mainly from people who wasn't even there. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. seven or eight people had hit me up, like, yo, you stopped the showcase? Like, yeah, they wasn't. Was, like, yeah, yeah was people so, talked about it a lot. It was so yeah. refreshing. Yeah. Because I don't I done been to a lot of them and I seen it to where you just made a showcase about one kid. Like, but but when they start competing, Man. the real ones came out. Yeah, you know what I mean. And that and that championship yeah. game, and I gotta get them guys their rings. I, I just got their rings. But uh, you had Lathan, you had uh, Daquan, you had um. Who else was on that team? Uh, uh, that uh, uh Shadrick, the young man from Iowa, and it was a couple, couple. They, I got all their rings. Those 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 games was good. And the video that I loved. Was when Angelo chased down that um, chased down um, who was that the guard went out for that uh, the game winning layup and he blocked it and the game went overtime yeah Yeah, so it did it definitely changed the dynamic of the game Um, between last year and this year who has been the toughest player that you've had to guard who gave you buckets give them their flowers Uh, like we already talked about I think like me being like the biggest player on my team like more like going against Reyes is. It's hard to guard him. Yeah, it is hard. Yeah, he he he's a solid young man. Yeah. Um, he's going to be phenomenal at the next level. The one thing I will say, and and, and I'm saying this with, and I don't even know if I should say because somebody will see this and think that I'm hating on Rez, and I'm not because I love him and I love his dad. I love to. I would love to see Rez get some additional block moves. I feel like, and the move that he is, it's like it's like <coughs> your dad would. And I know you would know. But it's like uh, Kareem having the hook shot. It was unguardable. You couldn't. It's like, why well, get another move when you can't stop this move? I would love to see Rez get some additional block moves. Like, I, I see that he's getting real comfortable out in the block, shooting, yeah. jump. But, like, you know, at the next level, he's, that's primarily where he's going to be at. So I would love to see um, when he gets there, whether, you know, those assistant coaches, like, work on his footwork a little more. Not saying that he doesn't have any, yeah. but just to kind of expand it a little more. And I and I, I see where you're going. Um, what I will say about Rez, though, is not a lot of kids his size. Like, he is a yeah. massive man. He, he is. So, he so. Does, so a lot of the moves so. that you look, we all looking for, he'll get that at the next level. Okay. Because they gon', they gon', he going to have some body. Okay. But he don't have to. He don't have to have it now. Okay. Man, okay. okay. And that's yeah. fair. Yeah. And that's fair. That that's actually fair. Yeah. I watched him. I, I saw Rez play about four or five games. In all four or five games, he has dominated. Yeah. But all four or five games, I sat and watched. Like, ooh, I wish he would. Ooh, yes. do this move. Ooh, do that yeah. move. Cause they be there. Yeah. And when he don't do them, and he goes to the move that he does, yeah. it worked. Yeah. yeah, sure, it worked. But it was like mm, I, w- I wanted to see him do. But but you're right. At the next level, he's going to have to work on yeah. those anyway. It's like. Why do I got to do it against somebody who's guarding me that's 6'4 yeah. or 5'4? Yeah. So, no, nah, you're right about that. Amen. But, again, this is no diss to him. This is He's a great kid, and I love his family. So, I don't want nobody to take that the, the wrong way. Uh, who was Barbecue Chicken? Who you give buckets to? Name them. Name them. <laughs> Everybody has named a player <laughs> or a team. I'm gonna just have to say HF. Okay, it. there we go. Like, talk, you, uh, talk your uh, talk. Uh, <laughs> hey, Coach JD, hey, Mark. You heard the man. He gave y'all buckets. Um, name your all time NBA team five starters and one six man. Five starters, one six man. Point guard, Kyrie. Okay, okay. That's a, that's new. Go ahead. Sh- shooting guard, Harden. James. James Harden. That's definitely new. Go ahead. Small forward, KD. Okay. Power forward, Dirk. Oh, that's new. Okay. And then center, Shaq. Okay. Who are your six man? That's a slug. I ain't gonna be slugs. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you six? I was just thinking that's a lot of big folks. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Who, <laughs> who's your it's six your man? It's your team, though. It's your team. Ain't no, ain't no judge. Six man. Throw MJ in there. Okay, MJ off the bench. Who you got, Pop? That's tough. <laughs> Good. You, you gotta get a ride home. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. My ain't coming out yeah. nobody yeah. bench. Call, call the Uber. Yeah. Call the Uber. You're, you're done now. Uh uh-uh. uh. Who your Who your five and six man, Pop? Uh, I'm gonna put Mike at the point. Okay. I'm gonna put uh, Kobe at the two. Okay. 
Uh, I'm going to put KD at the three. Okay. I'm taking Antetokounmpo at the four. Interesting. And then I'm going to take Elijah Wan at the five. I love when people like, say Elijah Wan. Who's your sixth man? My sixth man, I got to be a, a, a junkyard dog because we, we just need that grit. Okay. So it honestly would either be Oakley or Draymond. Shit. Whoa, just I just from the standpoint. I got you. Everybody on the team, you need a dog. You do need a dog. And interesting that you said Elijah Wan. So mine's is AI, Kobe, Mike, LeBron, and I got Hakeem. My okay. sixth man is Jamal Crawford. Oh yeah. My sixth oh. man. So a little bit of little bit of dog, a whole lot of score. Yeah. For Elijah Wan, I would highly, and I mean highly recommend taking the a day or so to just watch some Elijah Wan tape. Like, I could see a lot of his game being translatable to your game, particularly the spins, the pump fakes. Like, his game was, it was tough. It was tough. It was tough. It was tough. I love watching Elijah Wan. Um, in Islam, I'm Muslim. We believe that our children pick us as parents. Hearing that, what does it mean knowing that you pick this man and your mom to be your parents, your guardian? Talk a little bit about your dad. Talk a little bit about your mom and talk about your family as a whole. Uh, my mom and dad, they just do so much for me. Like my mom, she's always working, doing everything she can for me. So I'm so grateful to have her and my dad the same thing. Like even like dad, dad standpoint, coach standpoint, he's always there for me, the first one for me. So it's just, and I have a wonderful family. Like all my siblings, like I have a close relationship with. And like, and we're all athletes, so we all have that like commonality. Commonality, yeah, yeah, so we're yeah. All close like that. So I have a, I'm very thankful, and grateful for the family that I have. Dad, talk a little bit about your kids, man. Like, what they mean to you? They picked you to be their guardian, their leader, their, you know, their parent. Like, what, what does that mean? Knowing that, and like, you know, what does your, what does your children mean to you? Like, how do they motivate you? They are my heartbeat. Like, I had opportunities to go. Coach collegiate, like I be on the road. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't give up my experience to watch them grow for the world. Uh, because at the end of the day, when it's time for them to leave the cupboard and it's bare, and it goes by fast, real fast, it, it's just gonna come down to the memories. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not with them building those memories, if I'm on the road, but it's not worth nothing. It's not worth it. And then they're trying to find out who they are. That's my job. So, That's the best part about. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you something. <clears throat> yeah. The best part about being a dad, and and I'm and I'm saying this on the outside, but the best part about us being a dad is creating those memories for our children. And with all due respect, hearing your dad say that his dad wasn't around, that quantifies his determination of creating those memories. Right? I love being a dad. Like. Nothing means more to me than Xavier and Zayden. Like I love being a dad, and now that Zay is in college, and you probably had this too with Trey a little bit as they becoming men. Like now, you those conversations are different, and Trey is probably here. He's probably where Zay is. I'm going to say he's going. Just watching Xavier each time he comes home, like seeing a small addition to that manhood, the way yeah. he carries himself, that confidence as a man, his chest is out a little bit more. And, and it's just like those, he's not afraid to like have certain conversations with me now. Like I, I love being a dad. I can, I can, I don't remember a lot of stuff, but I can remember almost to the time second and day of a lot of things when it comes to my children. I, I wouldn't trade, I wouldn't trade it in the world. And, I, and, and you guys don't, I don't think sometimes y'all really realize how much we like when y'all are asleep or just off doing your own thing, how much we just, we just think about y'all all the time and just want the best for y'all. And we just really love y'all. Like, so like I can, I can definitely speak on that. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. that experience is very well said. Yeah. Well yeah. Said. We love it. We love it. Um, what you think about exposure around the platform and what this whole thing means to the high school athlete? Uh, what y'all do is great. Like y'all take your, your own time to come and give, give ex exposure to some athletes who, who wouldn't get like, like other, other athletes would or whatever. So it, it's, I think what y'all do is it, it's a really great thing. I appreciate what that. What y'all doing to, to athletes around. Yeah, we definitely appreciate that. Dad, what, you know, what's your thoughts on the, the whole platform? I, again, like, you know, we've had conversations and um, just as I was growing and I know you've been paying attention. So, like, what's your thoughts? I, I think it's, you can't, I can't really put it into words because 
this is preparing these young men for a bigger platform. Mm -hmm. Like how many times are they sitting at home practicing to deal with interviews? Because when now you want the NIL money, you better be able to sell that product. You better be able so to sell that product. Now it just comes down to the relationships. Can you feel comfortable in a, in a setting to be able to articulate and, and sell yourself, mm -hmm. but let the world see who you are. Mm -hmm. Cause he's not a very talkative guy, mm -hmm. I mean, kind hearted, respectful, mm -hmm. but after the games, you really ain't get a chance to talk to him. Mm -hmm. So you don't know the personality, the platform that Exposure Runs is creating. It's letting the world see another side of a young man or who's ever on this podium that they really don't get access to. And that's going to take it to another, another level because more people are going to be motivated to watch the shows and get to know who that person really mm -hmm, is. Mm -hmm. Because you may come there on a the night, he might be sick, and you're not seeing what you saw on the video. Mm -hmm. Or he may just be locked in, and you may see an angry kid, but he just want that. Mm -hmm. But that ain't really him. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like Now, you at Exposure Runs, you see the smile, the million dollar smile. Mm -hmm. You hear him talk about how much he care and love the parents. Mm -hmm. Like that, that resonates. Now, mom watching this, she's gonna call sister, mm -hmm. sister, and auntie, mm -hmm. and and they want to hear it because it's it's just radiate. And it, that's it definitely the part does. About the platform. And also too, we we're, we're very purposeful for two things. Number one, we're very purposeful in making sure whether the parent wants to get on or not, because we've had parents sitting over here, right. um, but we're very purposeful in making it comfortable for the parent and, and the player right? and, and, and the athlete. And we want them to just just have a regular conversation. Like, this ain't nothing about no gotcha this and gotcha that. We just, it's more really, honestly, it's more for me to get to know the player. I, like, yeah, we got an audience and yeah, we know that, but like, it's like I, I actually want these questions. I want to know this stuff, but I want to know because I know that people want to know. Yeah. And I agree with you in that the other purposeful thing that we are, particularly when we're going out to the schools or the games or some of these events, is we know that they are going to get an opportunity at some point at the next level to be talking in front of a national media. Right. And we're hoping that we're providing them some type of experience of, oh, that this, this ain't so bad. Yeah, I can I can talk like that yeah. or I can, you know, I can articulate myself. The, the world loves saying how well our children are, particularly young black men. Are, oh, they're so articulate. It's like, yeah, we know. Just get to know them a little bit. Yeah. Get Just to get to know him a little bit. Before you go, I want you to get yourself, look in that camera, get yourself a future message. What do you want to tell JD, you, uh, JT? You are going to, obviously, you see a lot of our stuff. You're going to see it up and down the timeline at some point. Five, ten years from now, you'll see it. What message do you want to give yourself? Keep working, stay to what you're doing, and it, it, it all come into place. Okay. Pop, give your son a future message. Um, just stay the course. Uh, you have a path. Uh, you are a great young man. I want you to be an ambassador. Uh, for the family, uh, continue to be a noble gentleman, uh, respect, be humble, and just work hard. And those are simple. Mm -hmm. Simplicity is the best thing about life, my brother. Um, with that being said, I'd like to thank you guys again for coming up to the show, um, taking some time out of your, what's today, Wednesday, Thursday? Today's Thursday? Thursday, Thursday out of your Thursday night. I know you got some homework to do. I heard him say that. <laughs> the um, so make sure you get that done. Uh, shout outs. I definitely want to give a shout out to my son Ziggy and my son Zay. <laughs> Xavier. <laughs> my my six-year-old saw our show one day and I gave shout outs and I didn't name him and he was pissed. Oh, so yeah. now he gets the first. Um, shout out to my guy Bo Harris over there, AGM Plus, uh, Numerex Tyree Booker, of course, SVI, Anthony and Grant Leach. I will never not name them. Um, they are sponsors for the show. Derek Ellison. Derek is a huge um, asset. He has been a huge asset to us um, and myself personally. And then, of course, to my guy, Ryan Foran, who I partner with for the Shout Town Showcase and the upcoming, upcoming unsigned senior showcase which will be on march the 30th so we're going to have 25 of hopefully the top uh unsigned seniors come out to this event last year i had about 50 
coaches there. Uh, my goal is to get at least 100 in the building. So we'll see if I can get that done. But of all levels, D1 won't be there. We're not a, a fully NCAA sanctioned, quote unquote, that the division wants. But my guy Bo is going to provide a stream link so they can uh, tap in. There you go. Yeah. And it'll be a little bit different than the showcase. We're going to actually have them working out. So we'll have Sam Franklin, David Williams, and former Northwestern star Juice Williams will come and run through some drills, uh, some action drills, some three versus threes, five on fives, and then we'll play some games. But we want the coaches to see them in their element of moving and, you know, cutting and screening and talking. So it'll be a little bit different than the showcase. So hopefully they'll get a chance. To, and it's all free. That's my favorite part about it. Yeah. yeah, we provide this platform for free for the uh, for the athlete. So, yeah, on that note, we'll see you guys on the next episode. <laughs>